The concern of Dallas police, as we mentioned earlier, has resulted in the sending to Dallas of 20 highway patrolmen from nearby Tyler, Texas, 98 miles from the city. At the present time, the downtown area has been sealed off because of the massive traffic jam and the other difficulties caused by the events today. Earlier today, earlier this afternoon, actually just a matter of minutes ago, uh, correspondent Lord talked with one man who had come to the city hall to see Jack Ruby. He is a friend of Ruby's, and his name is C.A. Droby. He talked with Lord. You are one of Ruby's lawyers. Perhaps you will defend him in this case. I understand that uh, you received a call from your wife at home. Yes, sir. A police detective told me how he knew it. I don't know that I had been threatened, and I just talked with my wife. And what did you tell her? Betty, and Betty told me she had she was crying and said that uh, she had received two calls that I would be next to die. From the same person? Oh, she doesn't know. She said it. a foreign it. voice? It's in a foreign voice, yes. And what did you tell her? I told her to get the baby and get out of the house. Nine years old. Uh, was it a man calling? Yes. A man calling both times? Yes. There is a report that Oswald has died. How do you feel about this now? Well, I, I just don't know what to say. I, he, as a lawyer, and I've defended a lot of people, I think he should have had his day in court and let a jury decide his fate. I've, I've always felt that way about anyone, regardless what he's charged with, that he ought to be tried before 12 folks of community. These past tw two days have not been good days for Dallas. No, sir. Sure hasn't. I, I don't guess anyone's been as upset as I have about it. I just... Of course, I was standing pretty close to the sheriff's office myself when... What are we on? Here? When the president was shot. Did you see the actual shooting of the oh, president? Oh, no, sir, I did not. My office is in the lawyer's building, which is just a short distance from where it actually happened. Fine, thank you very much, sir. As it later turned out, C.A. Droby, the man Bill Lord was talking to, has apparently not been selected to serve as one of the defense counsels for Jack Ruby. You heard him also mention threatening telephone calls to his wife from a foreign accented voice uh, threatening him with death as being the next on the list. These rumors and threatening calls have been spreading throughout the city for the past several hours. There are many, many stories currently going around, some possibly linking Ruby to the latest dead man, Lee Oswald. None of these are confirmed. It is very difficult at this point to bring you up to date on so many totally erroneous reports. One of the attorneys who has been selected to serve as a defense counselor for 52-year-old Ruby is another uh, visitor to the jail on, on the third floor, or rather uh, at the city hall. Bill Lord talked with him as well. Um, Howard, who has been selected to represent Jack Ruby. Mr. Howard, I understand you were up in the jail and talked to him. What did he say? I just talked to him a few minutes ago with, re with reference to whether or not he wanted my firm to represent him. Uh, he requested that we represent him along with Mr. Fred Bruner's firm. And, what was uh, his mood? I would say that he was uh, very excitable, almost in a state of shock. Uh, he's a very excitable, nervous man uh, by nature. And uh, he seemed to uh, just be uh, terribly disturbed. Would you say he's so excitable by nature that uh, he could do a thing like this? I would say that he is one of the most excitable men that I know. Uh, he, I know, I've talked to him about the president, and he was a great admirer of the president. He was also a great admirer of police officers, and uh, at least on one occasion had prevented uh, death or serious bodily injury to uh, two officers, and that was 
written up in the paper several years ago, and uh, he was uh, commended for it. Was he crying? Uh, I would say he was almost in tears. Did he uh, say any words his, that you could repeat? His, his voice uh, was very shaky. Uh, yes, uh, we discussed the case to this extent that I advised him of his rights and what he should do and should not do, and he said he would follow my instructions to are the you, best of his ability. Are you worried about, are you worried about his safety? Well, a man would have to be worried about his safety after the things that have happened here in the last two or three days. Uh, I, uh, I don't feel that any uh, law-abiding citizen should want to harm him in any way. And yet? And yet there, yet he might be. Because Mr. Oswald was shot today. He was shot uh, when there was police all around him, and uh, it didn't look like uh, anyone could harm him, uh, yet he was shot. Lawyer Tom Howard interviewed by ABC's Bill Lord. We understand that he has been selected as at least one of the defense counselors to serve for Jack Ruby who has already been formally charged with first-degree murder in the death today of Lee Harvey Oswald. These events, these bizarre, frightening, strange, unbelievable events, have overshadowed somewhat another major story in Dallas, the story of the man who was riding directly in front of the president at the time of the assassination, Governor John Connolly who was wounded himself and for several hours was in very serious condition at that same Portland Memorial Hospital. At the time of the Oswald slaying today, the Oswald shooting at the City Hall, approximately 11.15 a.m., the governor's wife, Mrs. John Connolly, who has constantly been at her husband's bedside at Portland Memorial Hospital, went before the press for the very first time. This is an extremely moving appearance and it must be pointed out I think that besides the president the first lady Mrs. Kennedy the governor Governor Connolly and the Secret Service man driving the car there were no other individuals that close at the time of the assassination and so Mrs. John Connolly is perhaps the first real eyewitness that we have heard from directly Here's Mrs. Connolly. Governor Connolly has asked me to convey to the people of Texas, the nation, and the world our deep sorrow of the sickening tragedy which struck at one of President Kennedy's most triumphant hours. Words cannot fully express to Mrs. Kennedy and to the President's family our feelings, which we know all Texans share. Our son John will be our personal representative at the funeral of the President in Washington Monday. The Governor joins me in asking that all Texans observe the day of mourning Monday in memory of the president. Speaking again for the governor and myself, I want to express our deepest appreciation for the wonderful friendship of so many fine people. We have received many telegrams, phone calls, and personal visits for which we are very grateful. I especially appreciate the friendship and warmth of the people of Dallas, both before and after the terrible tragedy. We would also like to thank those who have sent so many beautiful flowers to the hospital. <laughs> it is our hope that our friends who might wish to do this would instead contribute to the fund for the family of Officer Tippett. Our grief is all the greater because of his sacrifice. The governor is now apparently out of danger. I talked to him just now, and he asked me to tell everyone he's going to be all right. He's 
in good spirits, and we deeply appreciate the care he has received at Parkland Hospital from the doctors, the nurses, and the staff. John had a very, very close call. We thank God he was spared. I have one other thing to say, if I can. Um, we had been with the President and Mrs. Kennedy through the tour. It had been such a wonderful tour. And when we arrived in Dallas and the long motorcade, the people couldn't have been friendlier, the crowds couldn't have been more wonderful, more generous in their reaction to the president. And I just had such a good feeling about the, the way they had received him in this city. I had just turned around and said to him, you can't say Dallas doesn't love you, Mr. President. There is certainly nothing that can be said after such a moving and emotional statement from the First Lady of Texas, Mrs. John Connolly. As she stated, her husband's condition continues to show improvement. He remains at Partland Memorial Hospital, currently under very strict and very heavy security guard. The strictness of the security in all areas of the Dallas community at the present time is extremely obvious, and I think it's extremely obvious why such security measurements are being taken. Very briefly to recap, 52-year-old Jack Rubenstein, who goes by the name of 52-year-old Jack Ruby, has been formally accused by the city of Dallas as being the slayer of Lee Harvey Oswald, the 24-year-old accused assassin of the President of the United States. Oswald died approximately an hour and a half after the fatal bullets were fired in the basement garage of the Dallas Police Station. At the present time, Ruby is being interrogated once again on the third floor of the Dallas City Hall. We understand that his sister, who has only recently recovered from surgery, has left her home to visit her brother. Mrs. Eva Grant is now at City Hall. We also understand that the city officials of Dallas, the city police officials, Police Chief Jess Curry and federal agents are meeting at this uh, hour at the chief's office and are awaiting the arrival from Washington of a key Justice Department official, apparently to piece together the strange facts and the multitude of rumors and suspicious stories that are circulating throughout this city tonight. This is Roger Sharp reporting from the studios of WFAA-TV in Dallas. Now back to Bob Young in New York.